Hey, Jimmy with Cuff and Stuff. Well, today we're going to do a traditional St. Patrick's Day meal. But if you've been watching this channel, you know we're probably not going to do it in a traditional way, and we're not. We're doing corned beef and cabbage and some other vegetables. But I'm not going to do it the traditional way and boil the corned beef in the uh, pot on the stove and cook it in the oven. Oh no. Today, for all you people that use the PK, the portable kitchen grill, that's what we're going to do it on. If you have a smoker, a grill, whatever, you can do this meal outside and way better than you can do it on the stove or in the oven. Okay? So stick around. We're going to get this cranked off. So hang tight. All right, well, while we've got our grill coming up to temperature, let's get our corned beef ready. Now this is four pounds of corned beef. I just got it out of the meat counter at the grocery store. Um, I did not soak it to get all the salt, but I did rinse it off real good and then pat dry with paper towels and got it dried down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and today I'm using Uncle Steve's Spicy R, or Spicier Shake, um, I actually talked to Uncle Steve and he suggested this might be one of the rubs that would work well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it today. I like this rub. So this is, again, four pounds. So I'm not gonna go super heavy with it, but I'm gonna make sure that I've got a nice coat on it now it's got a fat side this appears to me it didn't say but this appears to me to be flat off of a brisket or a piece of a flat anyway and four pounds is not very big and that'll do this is just going to be for my wife and i so there we go all right i'm going to let this hang out for 30 minutes or so uh, while the grill gets to temperature and, and when I put it on I'll bring you back. Okay we've got our grill up to temp and I'm going to do this pretty quick because if you see I've got a couple of pieces of pecan wood in there. I'm going to take the meat and I'm going to put it in that side up I'm gonna close it right back down. See how it flames up that quick? Okay, if you've noticed, I've got the two vents on the top closed. I have this side under the fire open, maybe a third of the way. I'm gonna cook low and slow. Right now, it's just a hair over 300 degrees and it'll settle back down. You see, I'm already getting good smoke on it. I'm gonna smoke this for about an hour and a half or two hours. This isn't something that I time. I'm gonna slip a meat probe in it and keep up with the temperature in this meat. I'm gonna come back, put it back in the pan and start to braise it. And when I do that, I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, while we've got our corned beef smoking on the grill, let's deal with the vegetables, okay? As you can see, I've got potatoes that I've halved, I've got onions that I've halved, and I've also got carrots. Next, you can't have corned beef and cabbage without cabbage, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, take a little bit of, this is Lee and Perrin's, that's my favorite Worcestershire sauce whatever. 
Um, I'm going to take half a stick of butter and I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to take and just push this down right on top of the butter right there. This is 16 mil ground pepper. Okay. Um, I'm going to take pepper, this ground pepper, and I'm going to put pepper in it. I like black pepper. And I'm going to take a little bit of sea salt. And put sea salt in it. And then I'm going to take it and wrap this up in a nice little package. Just like this. Okay, see? And I want to leave it up like this and I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to do four of those and I'm going to put that in the um, pan that I have and I'm not going to show you doing it again. Rewind if you didn't catch that, okay? I'm going to do four of them and when it's time to put the vegetables on, I'll show you how I do it. Okay, you see we got pretty good smoke on it. Um, we're in the 130s about uh, 135 or so. We're gonna take, now I've got a pan that I've got some water in. I'm gonna cover it about three quarters of the way and put it in this pan. I wanna braise it and that's gonna tender it up. Um, again, this was salt brine um, when they did the corning process. So it's, it has a lot of salt in it and I'm gonna take some of it out. I'm gonna stick this back in it, that meat probe. I'm gonna take some aluminum foil and I wanna seal this up good and tight all the way around and I'm gonna let the fire bump up a little bit because I've got all that cold water in it. And I'm gonna close it up. Now I wanna go to about 175 degrees before I put my vegetables in. Just because I've done it before, I know about what temperature will even everything out and get my um, corned beef done. So let's close it up. This is probably gonna be, my guess is, another couple of hours, um, maybe a little less than that, but when it gets time, I get it up to the temperature I want, I'll bring you back and I'll show you how we're gonna finish it. Okay, well, we are right about that 173, 174 temperature, and so it's time. Ooh, look at that. It's time for me to take off the foil. I'm going to put the potatoes and the onions. And I want to space those out. Those are bigger than the carrots. So I just want to get them in the liquid a little bit. And then I'm going to take the carrots and I'm just going to spread them out and spread them in this and then my little packages that I made with the cabbage in it I'm going to take that This time, I'm going to add just a little bit bigger piece of aluminum foil because, of course, I've added some bulk to this pan. I'm going to put it back on. I'm going to cover it up like this. And I still, if you notice, I have my probe in there. And this heat's coming up, coming around. Close it back up so I don't lose it. I want 
the vent on that side at about one half. Now, like I said, we're at about 173, 174 degrees. I'm going for somewhere between 195 and 200 on that corned beef. And I'm going to let it cook to that. And by the time that corned beef has cooked to that temperature, all my vegetables should be done. But we'll come back. We're going to check them, make sure they're fork tender. By the end, my cabbage will be done. And when that happens, we'll bring you back. Okay. Well, here we go. My ink bird says that the meat is ready. And if the meat's ready, that means that the rest of it ought to be ready too. Okay, let's pull the cabbage out. Oh my goodness. I am talking about smell of vision. I'm sorry you're missing out. Let's see. Oh yeah, the potatoes, the onions, the carrots. Oh yeah, they're all fork tender. Let's pull this probe out. I am very curious to see, start with the cabbage, the little packets of cabbage. Let's see how they turned out. Oh, I can smell it already. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look. Oh yeah. It's just as tender as it can be. It's cooked in that butter. I tell you what. Mm. Oh goodness. All right. I'm going to wrap this back up. I'm going to take it in the house. And I'm going to get it out on the cutting board. We're going to try the starter show here. Okay. Well, we've tried them. Mmm. Carrots are just as tender. Oh my gosh, the flavor. The potatoes, same way. Mm. Oh my goodness. All right. Now, this is what we were going after. Well, if I let this rest for about I don't know, half an hour. And I'm going to cut some slices off of this. Oh my goodness. And it's just like butter cutting through this. And I know I'm cutting it away from you. I'm left handed. What can I say? All right. All right. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to turn around that way. Look at this. Is that pretty? And it's still hot, hot. Look how it tears apart. All right. This is always my favorite part. I know this. I know I say it every time. And this is it. Let's try the corned beef cooked like this. Oh, I'm not a big corned beef fan. This is going to be a good meal with the cabbage, potatoes, and carrots, and onions, and that's all done. But I'm going to tell you what, this corned beef is just as tender as it can be. It's not over salty. I can taste a hint of that Uncle Steve shake on it. Oh my goodness, this is good stuff. And even better than that, I don't have a big herd that's gonna eat it, so the sandwiches I'm gonna make, ha <laughs> ha, oh my goodness. Well, thanks for hanging around, see how it turned out. As always, 
If you haven't subscribed, please do. Hit the circle on this side. We'll have another video for you on the other side. Until next time, hang tight.